Hello everyone, welcome back to The Kitchen Table. Today on The Kitchen Table, we have a stranger in our midst. Yes, it is a 3DR Solo Plus gimbal on the table. That's been kindly sent to me to have a loan of and a look at by Wex Photographic in the UK. So that's what we're going to talk about. Um, now, before we go any further, tradition uh, on this channel dictates that we must always have a beverage when we're talking about drones, uh, sometimes alcoholic, uh, but I need my wits about me for this strange beast. So um, we've gone for the coffee and it's a home roasted Guatemalan from Huehuetenanga. So uh, cheers. Mm. Let's move that out the way. So the 3DR Solo. So yeah, really, really kind of Wex Photographic to uh, send me their kind of media press demonstrator for a few days to, to have a play with. Thank you very much to those guys. Wex Photographic, for anybody who doesn't know, big name in the UK in terms of traditional photography, video and imaging, big website, big sort of um, superstores for camera gear and lenses and all that kind of great stuff. And they are one of the authorised um, uh, resellers for Solo in the UK. Um, they've uh, they've now got them in stock. It's all landed. It's all going out um, to, to to on the shelves. Um, so yeah, they've let me have this for a few days to 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 get my thoughts, which is brilliant. What I thought I would do um, is rather than do one long video, uh, I'm just going to break it up into three, just uh, to make it a bit more uh, palatable for my brain and yours. So what we're probably going to do is in this first one, I'm just going to look at first impressions. I've not seen one in the flesh, so this can be first impressions, fit and finish, quality of the materials, things I immediately like or don't like about it. Next video afterwards, we'll look at the uh, the technical side of the app um, from 3DR and the transmitter and how how you kind of talk to the drone, the setup and everything like that. And in the final one, we'll go and hopefully, fingers crossed, get some good weather and go and throw it around. And how does it feel to fly as a pilot and how does it feel to operate as an aerial camera platform? So that's what we're gonna do. Now, one thing, the guys at Wex were very much at pains to say, look, this has done the rounds a little bit in the past couple of weeks. It's been out to a lot of people, journalists and uh, their contacts. And of course, they know a lot of people from the traditional camera video world. Um, so m massively big experts on, on imaging and cameras and photography, not necessarily experts on flying multi-rotor aircraft. So this thing has had a couple of um, little instances. I can, I can see a, a reasonable amount of green on some of the leading edge of these props, which is normally a telltale sign. But that's actually, I think, a good thing. This isn't a factory fresh out the box. In fact, it didn't come in a factory box. It came in a Go Professional case. Um, so, you know, this is, this is a good thing as far as I'm concerned because it gives me a chance to see how, it's, uh, how it kind of looks after some people have not been very nice to it. So the first thing I noticed getting out of its case was, oh my goodness, this thing weighs. And I mean, I, you know me, I'm not the most ripped kind of uh, He-Man type guy. So I put this on the scales just now, it's 1.8 kilos. Um, in this state, battery in, gimbal, camera, no props, but ready to go other than props. 1.8, that's, that's heavy. Um, the P3 Pro over there uh, in the same state is 1.3. So I thought, wow, what are they running? A sort of lead acid battery? Um, let's have a look at it. Um, now. One thing I like immediately is the battery um, sort of insertion and removal. There's a, a kind of a flush little button here with a recess. You press that down and it's quite easily marked, two little arrows. You press that down and slide. The whole thing slides back, little lip there, lifts out. That's nice, I do like that. Um, some Nice and easy and there's some big chunky lugs there to mate it in. So I think that's pretty good. Um, the, uh, but the battery isn't, you know, I thought, oh, this is gonna, <laughs> that's just kind of fairly normal battery. Um, then I picked this up again and yeah, it's, it's, it's still heavy. Uh, in this state, battery out, it was pushing 1.2 kilos. Um, whereas the Pro with the battery out is 950 grams. So this has got a little bit more heft to it, it has to be said. Um, and part of that might be to do with the next thing. Um, immediately noticeable to me anyway, uh, just handling it, uh, the quality of the, pla this, is, this is high density, high quality plastics that they've used. And I think they're actually structural and that's, that's probably why. Um, it just has a, 
you know, a solid feel to it, reassuringly expensive uh, as the ad goes, perhaps. Um, but but this, you know, you, th there's no kind of soft bits and pressy in bits. And even along the join line here, I can't, you know, that's all good as far as I'm concerned. Um, and, and if it is structural, it's done, it's done a good job because I, I, I'm trying to put a twist and I can't put a twist onto this arm. That's gonna bode very well, I think, um, if all else works with it for, for flight stability and for resilience if the unfortunate unexpected landing happens. Uh, speaking of landings, um, I don't know if I'm a fan of these legs or not really. There's no shock absorption in them at all. They're very rigid. There's no, I mean, if I, you see, if I press down, I know these are rubber, these just little rubber tips, they're gripping, but if I'm pressing down, there's hardly any give. Um, you're gonna get very minimal uh, shock absorption if you come in hard and of course any any shock is going to travel straight up here uh, And maybe that's what it's designed to do hence the rigidity. Maybe that's going to be be fine, but I I, I don't know they, they seem very stiff um, Indeed obviously as usual we've got ante antennas sort of buried out the way in there It's a little looks like feels like a little plastic sticker panel to keep them out of the way. That's all nice and tidy um, the rest of it, well, it's it's a it's a look, and you either like the look or not, don't you? It's a bit kind of stealth bomber. Some people have said spaceship. Um, <laughs> the trend in get a lot of gadgetry these days to go the piano gloss <laughs> finish, which immediately looks fingerprinty as soon as you've removed it from the packaging. So yeah, it's that matte and piano. It's very much a. Do you know what? I know people always use the analogy, don't they? Um, Apple type product and everything else in the drone market is more Android, but. It, it, to me it is. We've got the matte grey and the piano black, which is kind of that thing, isn't it? And it, and it, does, it does stand out. It has a certain, um, I know the Phantom's always had a slightly pot-bellied sort of friendly stance. This one is a bit more purposeful, which in this day and age of negative drone co um, coverage, I'm not sure is a good or a bad thing. Um, underside is very plain. We have the usual suspects, LEDs on the corners. Um, we have this link module, which is for future accessories, a pair button. Um, and the gimbal, and that's it. It's very clean under there. There's no wires or dangly bits at all. Um, the gimbal itself uh, is, yeah, it's an interesting design. Big chunky motor housing on the front here for the tilt. Um, everything else is pretty standard. One thing I did like, um, I'll see if we can highlight it. Let's see if we can get, yes. You can see that shine there. That is from the, um, the, the, the thin ribbon cable. That's obviously uh, in other, some other models of uh, quad with gimbals is exposed. And it's obviously a bit of a, that's a thin, very thin thing that's vulnerable. I like the way that this piece here, this molding is kind of got a channel in it and all of the uh, ribbon cables, and there's the other one going up into the main body, you can see it's shining there, are all recessed into that channel really quite deeply. And I think that's, uh, that's a, gonna be a, a positive thing. Um, Props, uh, metal, metal hubbed, metal threaded. Um, we have the uh, black and silver and corresponding dots on the top. They are standard self-tightening, spin them down, usual thing that everyone's familiar with. And then we've got the transmitted. Now this is something that has got a war wound. Uh, you can see here that has snapped off with some ham-fisted journo. Uh, that is supposed to be the clamp for your phone, and it is only a phone. This extends to that. I mean, you could, oh, am I gonna be able to squeeze my tablet onto there? Let's have a look. Reaches for it. Oh yeah, uh, just about. Although, look, it doesn't hold it securely in that direction. This is a seven inch tablet, and it will not stretch to that far. So, um, on a small tablet, you want to be a little bit, a little bit careful if you're going to use a smaller tablet with that. Uh, and also, uh, yeah, it's just sheared off. Someone's dropped it, I reckon. Um, so that's something that I think maybe they need to look at. It, it, it just slides along here, and there's a there's a tightening nut there. Shiny, shiny, as you can see. Glossy piano black. Look at all those fingerprints. Nice bright screen. Um, I looked at it and thought that's really wide. I'm not sure I'm gonna like that, but it's actually very comfortable, very rounded here, and um, with a couple of channels for your fingers around the back. No buttons on the rear. So, you know, you can, it's okay. I, I tend to fly finger and thumb and that's all right. And if you're 
with more of a thumbs on top, that's fine as well. Some buttons, some wheels and buttons on the top. And the tilt button is made up into a big paddle, which is quite good, because if, like me, you do tend to fly like this, you could still reach up with a middle finger and tilt it. Um, and obviously, thumb on top, you can use that. Chunky buttons. Um, quite a bright screen. Little stubby antennas. It's okay. Um, it's just wide. It's funny. It's, you know, it's big, chunky and wide. But uh, the most important thing, of course, is not really the look, but how, it's, uh, how it is in use. So we'll have a look at that. So there we go. As, um, as promised, a, a, a quick tour around and look and feel. And yeah, the, uh, broadly positive. It's very robust feeling, which is good at this price point. Um, a bit of a, bit of a thing about that plastic mount. Um, but you know, that's, if it was dropped, then, you know, that's going to happen. But th th this is definitely the sort of the least um, high quality plastic in the whole thing. But we'll see, and we'll see how it, uh, how it actually operates as a transmitter, which is probably more important. Uh, so yeah, next video, let's get, the, um, let's get the tablet out, the software loaded up, see how it interacts with the transmitter, with the aircraft, and how the camera control works, and what that looks and feels like. And after that, we'll hopefully get some flying in. So thank you very much for watching. Thanks to Wex Photographic for, um, for the loan. And um, if you want to have a look at the full spec and the package and the pricing on their website, I'll put a link in the description down below straight to that, see what's uh, going on in the UK about that. So until next time, thank you very much for watching and see you again soon. Cheers.